All right. Hi, guys. So my name's Anna. <laughs> Um, today I'm going to be talking about choices and how our choices can anchor our lives. Choices are something that are just a part of everyday life. And when I was a little kid, I went to the dentist for the first time and my mom loves to tell the story. <laughs> but I had to make a very important choice. Um, at the end of my visit, I did a very good job. My dentist looked at me and told me that I could pick a prize. So I looked at all the prizes and obviously they were all really cool. So I wanted to take lots of them. But my mom looked at me and she said, you can either make a good choice and take one prize or make a bad choice and take lots of prizes. So I weighed my options and <laughs> I ended up yelling, bad choice, as I tried to grab a handful of prizes and run out the door. <laughs> I don't know where I thought I was going, but I didn't make it even to the door before my mom scooped me up and I was crying all the way home. <laughs> So one of the choices that we have in life is the choice to follow Jesus and have your life anchored in him. You get to choose how close you and God get to be. The thing that defines us most as people is what we say when God asks, who do you say I am? In Mark 8:29, Jesus asked Peter, but what about you? Who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah. I think that we should all desire to be like Peter and answer like he did because Peter clearly communicated that his life was anchored in Jesus, the Messiah. God wants a relationship with each of us, just like he had a relationship with Peter. The relationship we can have with him is based on the free will of men. We get to choose whether or not we want to have our lives anchored in Christ. One of my favorite quotes is by Missy Edwards, and she says, that The free will of men is the most beautiful reality in all of creation. It's also the most terrifying reality because we really get to choose whether we are for him or against him. And although we are essentially immortal, we get to choose where we spend eternity. We will live forever, either in heaven or hell, because we will die on this earth, but God's going to come back, and he will call up the dry bones, and we will all rise, just like it was prophesied about in Ezekiel 37. God wanted us to choose whether we are for him or against him, because he just didn't want everyone to love him and say, you're beautiful, you're holy. The reason he wanted us to choose is because he wanted us to choose to have a personal relationship with him. Jesus wants us to answer, will I choose to be anchored in God? The most, the most important thing to God is you and your heart. He doesn't just want a section of your heart because he's a jealous God and he wants all of it. Exodus 24 through 5 says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. God wants all of you to want all of him, and that's the single most important thing to him. Making God the center of your life is ultimately a choice that we must make. We can choose whether or not God is our one passion in life. Some people decide that the things of this earth are more important than God. And Sean Bolt says that we will always have the tools that God designed us to use, but whether these tools are connected to his power and nature or just the power of humanity is up to us. God offers us many tools that can help us anchor our lives in him. For example, he gives us the Holy Spirit. Jill Austin says that the Holy Spirit is not an it, but a he. He is a person, and he wants you to know him, and when you know him, you will know God. Again, there's always a choice involved. You get to choose whether you want to make your life anchored in this God, and the Holy Spirit can help you anchor your life in God. Think about it. Adam and Eve chose a tree, which in essence was choosing knowledge over their perfect relationship with Christ. Now, you and I have the choice whether we get to make our lives rooted in the things of this, wor this world or the perfect almighty God. It's our choice. We get to choose whether or not God anchors our lives. You personally get to decide how, get to decide how far you will go and how abandoned you will be with God. God wants us to choose him because he's a jealous God who desires all of our heart. And God came to earth for you so that he could have a close relationship with you. Now you get to choose whether you want that as well.